Hi, 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 and welcome to LNA Does Audio Stuff. In this tutorial, I will show you how you can create a live performance or multiple song live performance out of your final production. So I will show you that in very, very, very easy steps. So let's get into it, shall we? Yes. <laughs> I have a song here that is a ready-made song. I think one of the easiest way is that we're gonna first create sections. So loop pull sections. So something that we can think that, okay, when we're on the stage, this rhythm or this beat or this melody bit can just keep on looping and we're fine with it. So we're just gonna find those sections first. So example in the beginning, my intro is this. So I think it continues about that area there. So what I want to do is just create some markers. So locators in Ableton Live. So on the top here, where you see that there's this little logo now, when I hover this kind of speaker logo, I right click from there and I put add locator and I just put here intro end here. And then basically, the next thing is I'm just going to look for like a verse For example. This would be verse and so on and then I would go to chorus and all that. So after we have created all these sections, so example here I'm like the chorus ends here. I feel like they're more logical in here though. Okay, so that chorus and intro. There we go. And in this of course in a live performance I wouldn't have vocals on it so I'm just gonna mute the vocals. There we go. So basically you just highlight and make sure that all of the samples, all the sounds that you want to have in the intro, in the first section, they are all soloed. So now I'm literally on the top here, export audio, and we're just gonna export this into a folder, wherever you want it to be. So example, this one is called breathe. The song is called breathe intro, and then look what is the tempo of it. So. 140 BPM. This is important. Make sure that you write down the BPM of it. We export it and we repeat this to other sections of the song. We take the verse, verse 140 BPM and so on. So let's say we have a song that is quite complicated and there's just a lot of production, there's a lot of different tracks, a uh, lot of different instruments as we have in here. How would you decide what to take and what, what would you like export to the other session? So example in here you can see that there's a lot of things happening. <laughs> point I would just need to make the decisions of which are the lo most loopable samples again gives you flexibility on the stage and how you can actually test that is grab this kind of selection tool on the top here and you align the area that you think could be possibly the area that you want to loop on the stage uh, and I will show you what looping means later in this so you will put it in the scene in here and you will play it and it gives you flexibility because it can play as many times as you can. You can go and have a drink, you know, you can have a little banter with the audience or whatever and it still keeps on looping. You are ready to continue the song when you are. So that's why we can take, select this area, activate loop and we can go to the end of it and see what's the transition like. For example, that sounded decent so I could just take them all or what if I would like to play, what if I would like to play that instrument on the dee 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 on the instrument, so uh, on the stage by myself, so it's not a re pre-recorded loop. So what I can just do is go to the track, mute that and have everything else playing. And that means that I can just select this, go to export, and just export that section without the solo bit there. I would then repeat this thing for every single section of the song to make sure that I have everything, all the sections that I want to play on the stage, okay? So now we're just gonna go to create a new live set. Firstly, I can just keep that in now for 120 BPM. 
because the first thing that we need to do is rename the first audio track and then I need to go to the scene, the first scene here and I'm going to put intro there and then I'm going to right click it and then from there I'm going to put edit lounge tempo. How wonderful. So what did we have? 140. This tempo is going to be different than the tempo in this. So we can actually change the tempo when we put the songs in. So let's go to the browser window. And from there, we're, let's go where the audio samples are. So mine are in uh, desktops. If you don't see your desktop here, you can just add folder and add it here. So I'm going to put there, light performances. And then from here, I can go breathe intro 140. Clever that. I click there and voila, that is 140 BPM. Breathe intro is there. So you can put, of course, put everything on the same track if you want to. So I could have that just as breathe and then go to here and also put the lounge tempo 140. Go here and change this as well. 140 there we go so now I can just go and put the also the verse in there as well as the as well as the C part so now I can create another audio track I've actually done the same process another song that BPM is 100 BPM so these were 140 and the other song is 100 so what I need to do now is actually uh, scene number four I need to go edit launch tempo and put 100 there. Go here, edit launch tempo, go 100 there. There we go. So now when I put the other song there called live or live or whatever, I can put the samples of that song there in 100 BPM. Hey, yay! So now the live performance is ready for performing. But when you are activating the clips with tempo changes, make sure that you always activate them from the scenes because that means that you will actually activate the tempo as well. Also, you can see that I have color coded the songs. So green is the first song, red is the other song. So I know which song and section comes next. But there's a couple more things. So example, let's say you have uh, MIDI instruments and MIDI clips. What happens then? You go from the browser window again and find the session that you had the MIDI instruments in. Uh, in my live performance, I want to launch one of the clips and then same time I want to play some MIDI on the top of it. So I go and find the instrument from the browser window. I double click it and what happens? It appears to this session with the instrument, with all the effects, MIDI effects, audio effects that I had in the original session. So how amazing is that? Because now I'm just pre uh, record able and start playing it with the clip. And then of course I can now loop on the stage or something to create that effect that I'm actually honestly playing on the stage as well. But also if you did have a session with clips in the session view, you can also get those in here by opening the track that you had them in and just drag and dropping. This is how you can get the actual clips that you had in session view transformed directly here and you can jump. <laughs> And that doesn't sound good. Maybe they were part of your song or your production, but it's a one really easy way to just transform data from your other projects into this one performance project. So then one thing that I would recommend in this point, let's say we have the bass and then we have this song here. And I would just now want to make sure that I highlight both of these. I color them so that I know that they're both the same song. And then I would maybe also group them. So I select them both again, press Command G, and there we go. And this song is got live. Hey, so it's time for the weekly question. So this question didn't have the name of the person who was asking, but the question is, what's the best, cheapest way to start making electronic noise? So if you mean the electronic noise as a like noise as a genre, 
uh, than almost anything because if it has sound distorted and put a lot of different effects on it. But if you just mean electronic music, then to be honest, anything that you can get hold of, so free dolls or Audacity or Reaper, whatever you get your hands on that can make sound is the your way. There is no like best way or there's no right way there's just the way that you're gonna go about it the way that i started all this was literally there's a proof on my wall this because of this i started music production i got this through uh, like yes the focus ride 2i2 set that i got a long time ago and i just basically bought that for writing songs to my friends as a joke and then suddenly there is this ableton live live light 8 and I was like, oh, what is this? And I just started experimenting. I didn't go, to, I didn't learn this in school or anything. Only later when I actually went to study music production, then I learned stuff in school. But yeah, I think you just need to start from somewhere and then it's just a spiral of learning and learning and learning and it will take time. But if you enjoy it, then you will learn it. <laughs> Anyway, thank you so much for watching today. Uh, please ask me anything down below and I pick one of the questions every week uh, and answer it after my Sunday video. And uh, yes, subscribe, please uh, hit the bell icon and I will see you here next week. Yes, we will. <laughs> A lot of cool stuff happening. A lot of cool stuff. Okay, thank you so much and have a nice uh, we Sunday and next week. Bye.